It's time for high school playoff football with your Garraway Pirates. WJER Sports and Claxon Communications present this live video stream on the WJER Radio YouTube channel and replays can be found on WJER.com slash videos. Special thanks to our scoreboard sponsors, Kime and Charm, Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital, First National Bank of Denison, Hampshire Insurance, Wendy's, T County Boxing Academy, Commercial and Savings Bank, and Sugar Valley Meats. At the conclusion of the game, we'll choose the player of the game, courtesy of your local Subway restaurants. Now let's go live to the stadium for tonight's action. Here are your WJER sports announcers. Bill Hammerstrom with WJER Sports here on the hill in Garraway for a round two playoff game. The Garraway Pirates against East Knox, the Bulldogs. I'm here with Garraway coach Jason Wallach. Coach, you got a 45-7 to seven win last week. What are you looking to improve on after that game? Uh, you know, just getting them better in all three aspects of the game. Um, you know, at times I don't think we tackled real well last week, and that's, that's not who we normally are, uh, especially on their scoring drive when we had them third down and couple third down situations and didn't get off the field so uh, getting off the field there in third down offensively we you know just continued to be efficient and uh, take care of the football East Knox looks like a team that's improved over the course of the season got a good running game a quarterback who started to play a little bit better here at the end of the year what challenge do they pose for you uh, you hit it, already hit it uh, their running back is a really really good player uh, you know 13 1400 yards on the season and uh, you know they run a play action really well off of it so uh, you know, we hope to slow down the run, uh, force them to, to throw the ball, uh, you know, get out of their play action game to hope, hopefully make things easier on our defense. So I know you're a team guy, but you had the uh, IBC South Player of the Year, Jensen Garber, which is a pretty big accomplishment for him considering you guys have running clocks in the second half a lot. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it's, we're just under the philosophy that when we get a lead, uh, you know, we only have 65 guys on our team. You know, we're a small school. Uh, you know, we get him out as soon as we can. Uh, for him to put up the numbers that he did, um, you know, was was phenomenal. And, uh, you know, and he'll be the first to attribute that to his, his line, his quarterback. Uh, but his, his off-season preparation and his in-season preparation is, is really good. And we talk about the offense a lot, but your defense is strong too. And Jackson Reifenschneider had to be up for, for that award as well. Yeah, Jackson's played great. Uh, it's just a whole uh, great story through and through. You know, he hasn't been able to play the last two years because of medical conditions. And uh, for him to come back out and have the year he's had so far uh, has definitely, definitely helped us. All right, Coach, thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. Good luck. For WJER Sports, I'm Bill Hammerstrom. Bill Hammerstrom for WJER Sports. I am here with East Knox coach Andy Beatty he, before his team's game against the Garraway Pirates here on the hill in Sugar Creek. Coach, you're taking on a number one seed. How do you approach that taking on a team with the accolades that Garraway comes in with? Yeah, you know, our message really for our team has been the same all year. We need to focus on ourselves, uh, make sure every week we're improving, uh, we're staying steadfast in what we're doing. And, you know, because you can look across and, you know, you can talk yourself up or down every single week. And so we just want to make sure we bring our uh, absolute best every night. And that's, you know, the same approach we're having here tonight. Coach, looking back, you started the season one and two. And then since then, you've been on a pretty good tear. You got a, a win on the road against a, a good team from Martins Ferry. Uh, what was the turning point for you this season? You know, I really do think it was week four, we entered league play. And you know, we believed about ourselves that we were a good program, good team. We had made some major changes schematically, offensively, and defensively. Uh, and so, you know, we're sitting one and two, and we had felt okay about the one and one. That week three loss was tough to a good Colonel Crawford team. And so week four was kind of that barometer almost. And so we came out and rushed, I think, for almost 500 yards that night. And, uh, you know, I think for a lot of the young men, it was this validation of like, okay, what we're doing is working. We need to continue to build on that. And how about last week? You're on the road, the lower seeded team. You're down 10 after the first quarter. What happened in that game that turned it around? Yeah, you know, that was one of those, you know, two and a half hour bus ride, get a little jitters. Or I, I don't really know. Uh, you know, I mean, hats off to Martin's Ferry. They came out swinging. And, uh, but these young men, they, they rode that roller coaster uh, and they just – 
kept their foot on the gas pedal and did what we do, which, you know, try to establish the run game, be physically uh, dominant in the box and, uh, you know, fought back from that and, uh, and then finished it after that. So, I mean, in Garraway, we're not familiar with East Knox, but we're going to get familiar with number 10, I imagine, Blake Elliott. Can you talk about what he means to your team? Yeah, that uh, young man is, uh, he's an exceptional football player, exceptional leader. Uh, he's an all-state wrestler. He's been a starter uh, since his freshman year. Uh, I think he's, you know, leading the state or nearly in tackles. He's our leading rusher. He is a young man who uh, does whatever we ask him to do. Uh, and he does it with resiliency and, and patience, uh, which in our, our schematically for us, our run game, we need things to kind of develop and then to hit it when it's there. Uh, and he has done a great job moving from tight end last year uh, to the backfield. Uh, he has looked the part. He's brought it. Been exactly what we needed there. All right, Coach Beatty, thank you so much. Thank you. Great. Have a good night. For WJR Sports, I'm Bill Hammerstrom. There are a lot of steps between conceiving, carrying, and cradling your baby. No matter what stage of motherhood you're in, our team at Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital will be there every step of the way. From your first visit to your first baby, we provide expert care right in the Tuscarawas Valley. Our team partners with each patient to create a custom birthing plan, ensuring the comfort and health of you and your baby for every care in the world. To learn more or schedule an appointment, visit unionhospital.org motherhood. The T County Boxing Academy is the area's number one training center for those who are serious about boxing. Serious athletes know that everything they put into their bodies affects their workouts, which is why the T County Boxing Academy offers the industry's best supplements at the best prices for the best workouts possible, including brands like 5% Nutrition. Try their real food protein with low glycemic carbs. If you want to train like the pros, use the supplements Pro Boxer Sugar Dre Donovan of Eurexville uses. Available at the T County Boxing Academy, located on East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best: sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee, or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular. Welcome to WJER's coverage of high school football playoffs. We are live at the Hill in Sugar Creek for Garraway's game. Second round matchup with East Knox. I'm Bill Hammerstrom. I'm here with Kyle Minnis. Kyle, it's cooling down a little bit. A little chilly tonight, a little chilly out here on the Hill, but you know what? A perfect night for some Ohio High School Athletic Association playoff football. And our seat doesn't matter how cold it is here because you are safe at home watching on YouTube or WJER.com slash videos. We'll have full coverage of this game coming up here on your WJER Sports. The Eat Fresh Refresh just won't stop. Now Subway is refreshing their catering with easy order platters and box meals perfect for any occasion. Start with sandwich or wrap platters. They're loaded with craveable crowd pleasers to feed your crew without all the work. Or try individually packaged box meals featuring a tasty 6-inch sub, foot long, or wrap, plus chips and a freshly baked cookie. When you have a group to feed, make it fun, delicious, and easy with catering from Subway. Visit Subway.com to place your catering order. Advance notice may be required. The First National Bank of Denison is proud to be your locally owned community bank. As a community bank, they're also proud to be a sponsor of today's game. Supporting local high school athletics is just one way the First National Bank gives back to the schools and communities that have helped make them successful. The First National Bank of Denison, proud to be your locally owned community bank. Visit them online at fnbdenison.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. 
Hey there, Garraway Pirate fans. For over 60 years, Hampshire Insurance has been a cornerstone of the Sugar Creek community specializing in home, auto, life, commercial, and farm insurance. With their friendly and efficient service, you can rest easy knowing Hampshire Insurance is providing a path forward when the unthinkable happens. Give them a call at 330-852-4087. Hampshire Insurance, proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates and your trusted neighbors in Sugar Creek. Welcome back to the Hill here in Sugar Creek as the Garraway Pirates are set to take on the East Knox Bulldogs. Garraway comes in at 11-0 after winning a playoff game last week in the first round, 45-7 over Rock Hill. East Knox is 7-4. They were the nine seed coming into this tournament, and they won an upset in their game last week over Martins Ferry. 35-17 was the final score of that one. On the road again for a second straight playoff game for East Knox. Garraway is at home for the final time because Kyle, next time they're on the road. But yeah, so so after this this round, uh, the Ohio High School uh, Athletic Association playoffs moves to neutral sites. So uh, yeah, if if the Pirates or or the Bulldogs for for that matter uh, are victorious tonight, they'll be going to a place to be determined probably Sunday afternoon. So this is Bill Hammerstone for WJER. I'm with Kyle Minnis. Last week, Garraway won 45-7. to None of the number one seeds lost last week. And Garraway's expected to win this week, too. Last year in this second round, the number one seeds went 25-3. and So it's safe to say that Garraway would be the favorite over East Knox. And that would be quite an upset if they lost in this round. Well, I, I would say so. Um, it, it's, it's never happened in, in the history of the Ohio High School playoffs uh, that, that a 16 team, 16 team has beat a number one team. Um, it, it, and, and as far as 8-9 matchups go, in, in, in my mind, I really don't think you can count that as a an upset. Um, those 8-9 teams are so bunched together, I'd really say from like 7 to 11, um, really kind of bunched up together. We're going to break for the National Anthem. All right, Kyle, let's set the stage for everybody here. We are sitting in the visitors' bleachers here on the hill in Sugar Creek for this game between the Garraway Pirates and the East Knox Bulldogs. It was a nice day today, nice and sunny. Now it's cloudy, and uh, it's getting chilly. Yeah, a little bit chillier. Like I said, uh, the, the temperature's dropping a little bit. The wind is definitely a factor. I mean, flags are, are straight out, you could say. Um, I don't know if that's going to affect uh, the kicking games of these two teams, but um, uh, th that's a very good segue into that is a strength of this Garraway Pirates team. Gio Cologne, their kicker, has made multiple kicks from beyond 35, 40 yards, and in warm-ups, he was, he was putting them through beyond 40 yards as well, but um, this wind might be a factor if it came down to a kicking uh, kicking, you know, 45, 46-yard field goal that might make Coach Jason Wallach maybe kind of take pause a little bit. So let's talk about some of the other players for the Garraway Pirates. Just this past week, the IVC postseason awards were announced, and the player of the year in the IVC South is Jensen Garber. He is a big-time receiver for the Pirates. Yeah, and, and you know, when, whenever I see a receiver win one of these big time awards the natural inclination is to say well, well what about the quarterback he's the one that has to deliver that ball to uh to the receiver 
when you see a receiver getting that kind of a praise, that's letting you know what kind of a technician that young man is in terms of his route running, in terms of the smarts in, in, in you know, not just running a route, but running a route and getting back to his quarterback, making it easier for his quarterback. Any quarterback would tell you that a good technician, a good wide receiver that knows the game, knows what everyone else is doing on the field, is their best friend. Garber's also a big play threat in special teams, returns kicks and punts for them. But the quarterback you're talking about is Brady Geibel. Just last week, he went 14 for 15 for 153 yards and two touchdowns. Kyle, we've watched him a few times here. Very smart quarterback, makes smart decisions. Uh, they didn't air it out a whole lot. Their longest completion last week was 19 yards, which uh, usually Garber has a, a bigger catch than that. But Kyle, when you get a look at him, he's going to be a smart receiver, make smart decisions, and check down if he has to. Well, and, and, and when you think 14 of 15, very efficient, um, just kind of very methodically moving the ball down the field. And really this offense, and especially being up, um, you know, three or four scores like they were last week, you don't need to take a lot of big risks. You don't need to, to be looking to try to uh, force the ball down the field, force the ball into smaller windows. Now tonight, I think it's going to be a little bit closer than, you know, a three or four score game like it was last week. So it might be something that you, you see the Pirates um, kind of taking the, taking the handcuffs off of everyone a little bit and getting a little bit more aggressive down the field offensively. All right, they also have Dylan Sunlin in the backfield. He rushed for 102 yards last week, three touchdowns in that game. And when we come back, we'll tell you about some of the players to watch for on East Knox. That's when we come back here on your Sports Voice of the Valley, WJER. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Subway is upping their game with the All-Star Subway Series menu. Like number 16, the All-Pro Sweet Onion Teriyaki, a new twist on an old favorite. Or number 18, the new Ultimate BMT with salami, pepperoni, and Black Forest ham topped off with extra provolone. And all of the new Subway Series subs are piled with cheese and fresh, tasty toppings. I can't wait to try them all. It's the Subway Series menu, Subway's tastiest menu yet. All right, we are back here with your coverage of high school playoff football here on WJER. Tonight's game pits the Garraway Pirates, the number one seed against the ninth seeded East Knox Bulldogs who just entered the field of play. I'm Bill Hammerstrom here with Kyle Minnis. Kyle, they really line the field here for Garraway when they make their introductions. They got students, looks like parents out there. This could be the last game. Well, this is the last game at their home field for some of these all of these seniors yeah yeah absolutely i mean i was just gonna say this is the uh this is the last game played on the hill here these seniors uh last time to run out of that locker room last time to run out here on your home field i mean i, I guess they've kind of probably been preparing the last few times um it, thinking that this could be one of the last times but um now it kind of hits home so you've got a lot of seniors lining the field 
um, kids that are <laughs> wrapped up in blankets and, and, you know, braving the cold to get out and show their support for this team. All right, we told you some, that we were going to talk about some players for East Knox. The one player you're going to watch for, and we heard about it in Coach's Corner, is number 10, Blake Elliott. Coach Beatty for East Knox said that he probably leads the state or is up at the top as far as tackles is concerned. And on offense, he has rushed for over 1,300 yards this season. So he leads the team in tackles, leads the team in rushing yards. A guy who's out there a lot. Yeah, six foot 190. He's got a good build, kind of low to the ground. Uh, runs hard, runs with a purpose. You, you always kind of see um, a, a guy that runs with his chest over his pads. Um, um, so so he, he's always leaning forward. He's always kind of falling forward for another yard or two. Um, another guy that, that really kind of stuck out to me, the kind of going into conjunction with Elliott in the running game, I'm going to highlight number 58, Devin Garrett, at 6'8", 310 on that offensive line. Um, there are some there are some hogs on that offensive line that in in the best way possible um six three two fifty six one three uh, two forty um some big big size here for these east knox bulldogs it's going to come in handy on offense too get their arms up for brady geibel's passes maybe try to knock some of those down keep pierre away from scoring as many points as they normally do we're about to kick the ball up here and away we go it's a short kick they want to avoid jensen garber back there White Wallet picks it up. Looks for some space, but gets nowhere. About three yards. They're going to start from about the 23-yard line, Kyle. Yeah, and, and you know, kind of a little squib kick that ended up seeing seeing its way through. You know, in baseball, they'd call that a seeing-eye single, but uh, made it all the way back beyond the 20, so exactly what this East Knox squad wanted to have happen to start off the ball game. So first and 10 from the 23, just getting started here on the hill in Garraway. Pirates offense takes the field, and they do have Dylan Sundland in the backfield this time. A lot of times he'll line up in the slot, and he'll go five wide. He's lined up in the backfield next to quarterback Brady Geibel. Sundland's going to get the handoff, and he's going to get stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Tackle for loss. Pick number 55 in there for East Knox. 55 would be Alex Dolby. Yeah, just nothing going on there. Uh, no push up front for this Garraway offensive line. This looks like a loss of three yards they're going to give him. Dylan Sunland's not used to that type of carry. And not what you want to have happen to get into a, to a, a second or third and long situation right off the bat. Add a penalty to it as well. Well, I think they're going to get East Knox on this one and get five of it back. So great job by Geibel using a hard count to draw the, draw the defense across. It's on that first play that uh, big defensive front came into play, just like you were talking about. 58's right in the middle there, I think, listed as uh, maybe a nose guard in the program. Yeah. Again, 6'8", 310. That's a lot of space taken up. And um, all three of those young men across the East Knox fr uh, f defensive front have gotten a good push that first play. All right, Geibel has the empty backfield this time. It's second down and seven. Looking to his right, or to his left. He's going to tuck it and run. Gets out to the 30, out to the 31-yard line. So again, about five yards on the carry by the quarterback. And, you know, kind of broke down a little bit. Um, th this could end up be, being an issue for these Pirates. Um, off offensive line is uh, looking a little shaky through the first couple of plays. Not a lot of time for, for Geibel. First pass play of the ball game. This time Sullen's in the backfield. White Wallach in motion. He's looking for him. He's now got he's plenty got of time. time back there. Rolling out to his right. And he's going to go out of bounds short of the first down. No gain on the play. So that time he had plenty of time to look around, but nobody was open. Springs up fourth and about two. So great defensive effort all, all in all for these East Knox Bulldogs. Um, you know, one one penalty, but other than that, a couple uh, a couple 
negative play, place for negative yardage. You give up a little bit of a scramble to Geibel, but uh, in my mind, a successful first defensive stand for these East Knox Bulldogs. Absolutely. Chase Wallach in the punt for the Pirates. Bad snap, skips on the ground, but he gets it up and gets the kick away. It looks low, bounces at the 45, rolls. Flag is down on the play. Kind of an interest, interesting on this, uh, I, I think there's going to be a sideline warning um, on, on East Knox here on this side of the field. So Brayson Davis was the Bulldog who fell on that ball. He's active in the receiving game for East Knox. And so now, now that East Knox takes over, um, we'll be looking for this running game that we see with uh, Elliott, Blake Elliott, to, to kind of start to take over and um, see what the, the Bulldogs have in store now. He's got the ball, and he's going nowhere. Maybe got two. So Blake Elliott with his first carry of the game. Yeah, give, give Elliott just one yard on, on that attempt. And much like the first play from scrimmage for the Pirates, just not a lot of push up front from that offensive line. They're moving quick. In there at quarterback is Jax Lester for the East Knox Bulldogs. Elliott next to him again, but he's in the shotgun. Like to throw into the slot in this formation. Ball is tipped. Are they going to call a fumble? Or was it, was it caught in midair? It was intercepted, tipped at the line of scrimmage and intercepted by one of the down linemen. Peyton Keller is announced. That is not what East Knox wants. That's the same thing that happened last week to Rock Hill. They had a turnover on their first possession. You don't want to let Garraway get out in front. You don't want to give them field position on their own side of the field. Absolutely. So, I mean, for, for, for this East Knox squad, you know, you, you tightened up defensively on the first series, held the Pirates. Now it's time to have what they call your sudden change defense take over. Someone moves into the backfield, takes the handoff, goes up the middle. Gets tripped and falls ahead for about three yards. Good job opening up a little bit of a hole uh, for Sunland, but again, just just not not a ton there. This um, this East Knox front again is is. They, they, they have to be cautious not to work too far up the field and create some running lanes, but they've definitely gotten a push up front. Peyton Keller came in motion, but Dylan suddenly gets the handoff again right up the middle, gets all the way down to the 35-yard line. Now the exact opposite of what I said just happened. You're, you're talking, talking a good push, a good hole open, and, and they were able to get that East Knox defensive front um, pushed back a little bit. So you got nine yards on second down there. First and 10 from the 35 yard line. Sunland again in the backfield. In motion is Bronson Speedy. Geibel carries it himself up the middle. And now you get the sense that this Pirate offense is maybe starting to find a little bit of rhythm. Uh, starting to get some positive, some positive yardage, some positive plays, so that could end up being a little bit dangerous now. Eight yards for Geibel on the carry. Haven't thrown it since those two unsuccessful plays in the first drive. Sunland in motion. Geibel sends it out to the right side in the flat, makes a man miss and goes out of bounds after a first down gain. Jensen Garber with the catch on that one. And you've got a flag coming in late as well. It looks like maybe a, a, a late hit out of bounds. It was coming from all the way across the field. Always, when, whenever a guy goes out of bounds, that puts going to be a face mask penalty on East Knox. So Garber got about 12, I believe, on the reception. 
mostly yards after the catch, and they tack on half the distance to the goal. It gives them first and goal there at the eight-yard line. So Sunland in the backfield. Been running mostly between the tackles with him so far. He takes it up the middle. Gets lost in a sea of humanity. He's going to be in. Pushes it in for the touchdown. Dylan Sunland with the eight-yard carry for the touchdown for the Garraway Pirates. And they take a 6 to nothing lead with seven minutes and 19 seconds to go in the first quarter. Great push. Like I said, it's all about momentum. Um, it, it, you saw this Pirates offense really get stymied the first time out. Now on that sudden change, your defense forces a turnover. You get the ball uh, in Bulldogs territory, and you're able to string together three or four nice plays, one right after another. Momentum takes you right into the end zone. Gio Cologne with the extra point, and it is good. So, 7 nothing, Garraway Pirates here on the hill in Sugar Creek, 7-19 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meat. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. So we're back 7-0 here. Garraway over East Knox. Gio Colon in to kick it off. Had a couple kicks that went out of bounds last week. That was a clean kick. Returns it out to the 20, 25, 30, and brought down around the 32-yard line. So now it's going to be really interesting. You know, this East Knox offense really only got, what, one playoff before the turnover really still have, haven't gotten anything offensively e even onto the field yet. So um, it's going to be something I think uh, this is an important drive. You'd really want to see them put together some, um, some time, take some time off the clock and put some points on the board if you're East Knox. So Jax Lester hands it off. It's Elliott again. He's got a hole. And he gets a nice gain on first down for good, East Knox. Good cut back by Elliott. He was able to find a, find a crease and kind of see, see his way through. Patient run. That was a great job by, uh, by Elliott. Elliott oh, gets six yards on the carry, and they're right back at it. Looking for the play call at the sidelines. Jax Lester at quarterback. Elliott's next to him. He takes the handoff to the right side. Squirts ahead for a yard maybe, but a host of Pirates are there to take him down. Tried that same cutback to try to cut back inside again. This time it was not there. Uh, the Garraway defense was able to not over-pursue, um, keep your outside contained and force everything back in. Just, just a one-yard pickup now. So it brings up third down and three. Just about six minutes to go in the first quarter. Lester fakes the hand up this time. Looking out to the side, he's got a man open, and that's a first down. He's wide open, and, and he's all the way down to the 35-yard line. Caden Wengerd. With a big reception. Hit. So Bryson Davis over there is their big time receiver and everybody was watching him. Left a man wide open who had a big gain for a first down across midfield. Yeah, that's gonna be a pickup of what? 20, 10, 20, 35. Elliott gets the carry on that one. Just about a yard. 
Dexter Ryan from Snyder almost a tackle for a loss. He leads the team with 18 of those so far this season. We got the playboards here with some sports logos on them. Looks like Jax is looking to run the ball. Oh, he gets oh. drilled right about the line of scrimmage. That's not what you want to see your your quarterback uh, take those kind of hits because he uh, he took a shot wow. and 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 where he took the shot it was right in his rib cage. Bronson Speedy was one of the players in on the tackle. He did not play last week. He became ill before the game, so he didn't play. But he's on the field now. Contributor on both offense and defense for the Pirates. So third and long. Jax Lester, he's pressured in there. With the sack is Jace Wallach. Flew in and sacked the quarterback. It's going to be a big loss. I was going to say you're in four down territory, but not now. Not, not after that big loss. Um, I, I was thinking if you were able to pick up you know, five, six yards here, and it was, you know, a fourth and four, fourth and five, something like that. Maybe you'd be able to say it was four down territory, but now not at fourth and 16. Householder into punt for East Knox. Gets it away. They're going to let it bounce. Great punt. Oh, oh, he almost had it, but it's a touchback. So when we come back, it will be Garraway football on the 20-yard line, up 7 to nothing, 322 in the first quarter here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters, and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. All right, Brady Geibel hangs on to the football, completes it out to the outside. Braden Raber with the reception. Looks like a gain of about six on the play. Brings up second down and four. Strong arm for Geibel. He, he was on the run, thrown across his body, able to get it out to uh, his fullback, Raber, kind of leaking out of the backfield. Dylan Sullivan with the carry. Gets up the middle. Works his way through the line. Gets out to near the 40-yard line. Gain of about 14 yards on the play. Very patient run there. He was able to make a couple guys miss in the hole and then accelerate through into the second level of the defense. Very good job by Dylan Sundland. So Sundland's listed at 5'6", 150. But we always say don't tell him he's a small guy because he can run over some of those defensive backs when he's running out there. First and 10 from the 40. Geibel takes the snap and rolls to his right. He's going to go down. It's going to be a loss of one on the play. Just nothing there. There was a lot of there was a lot of garbage in the backfield there for for uh, Geibel. Just just nothing really doing. He tried to get away from it late, but um, just a lot of garbage in the backfield. Derek Field also in the backfield for East Knox, contributing on the tackle. Second and long for the Pirates. Geibel's going to keep it, and he's going to lose yardage again. Little RPO action there, and at the very, very last minute, very dangerous, Geibel pulled the ball from Sunland at the very, very last minute, and I, I, I don't know. I don't think even if he would have handed it off to Sunland off the right-hand side, I didn't think there was a lot there to begin with, but... Uh, 
Uh, another little loss on the play there for the Pirates. Alex Dolby in there for the tackle for East Knox. Two tackles for a loss so far for him today. Sutherland moves into the slot. Geibel takes the snap, looking to his right side. He's going to air it out wide open across the middle with the catch. Jensen Garber, the IVC South Player of the Year, with the catch. First down, Pirates. Yeah, about 13 yards there for Garber. Um, Geibel took a huge hit right as he released the ball again right up underneath the ribs tough thing about being a taller quarterback Geibel goes uh what about six six three six four he's got a long motion and you leave your ribs wide open and that's what happened he got got decked right in the ribs right as he threw so someone takes the handoff takes it up the middle he's met and stopped after a gain of about three or four number 30 dylan sunland on the carry so they're really working Sunlin in the middle of the field. Yeah, I gave, they gave him about five yards. So five yards for Sunlin. Geibel's passing on second and five. Can't find anybody open. He's going to tuck it and run. He's going to get a first down. Gets down to the 30-yard line. Gain of 10 yards. Shane Garver with the tackle, but not before Geibel tucked it and ran for the first down. Took another hit there at the end, though. Another big hit, and um, it, it, look, looking for a little bit of a of a hold in the backfield. It looks like there, there was some, a couple East Knox players that came free, but I don't know. Geibel was able to shake them. He's looking downfield first, and he's going to run it again. Gets out of bounds. Decent gain on first down. Geibel has taken a ton of pressure, a ton of punishment here in the first quarter. So that was a gain of eight on the carry. When we come back, it's the end of the first quarter. Garraway is up seven to nothing. When we come back, it will be second down and two for the Pirates here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. All right, we're back on the hill in Sugar Creek as the Garraway Pirates lead East Knox 7 to nothing. Start of the second quarter. Kyle Garraway likes to score on big plays, but they're in the midst of a, an eight-play drive here, started at the 20-yard line. Yeah, and, and really no big plays for, for either team. One 25-yard completion for East Knox, but it's been very methodical so far through the first quarter. Geibel has a desirable second and short situation. It's a bit of a screen across the middle. Wyatt Wallach takes it. He's at the 10-5. Touchdown, Wyatt Wallach on the pass from Brady Geibel. Different kind of play call there. Yeah, call that a 24-yard touchdown pass. A little bit of a screen set up for Wyatt Wallach. Leaking across the middle. They, they, they call that a uh, jailbreak screen across into the middle of the field. And great job by the... Garraway defensive front to uh, uh, sell that. So we just said there were no big plays. There's a 24-yard pass play for a touchdown. And if it had been from further away, he was wide open in the middle of the field and had an easy lane into the end zone. Gio Colon with the extra point. It's 14-0. First play of the second quarter. Touchdown for the Pirates. 11.51 to go in the second quarter. We'll be back here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences. 
and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. All right, it's 14 nothing here as East Knox gets set to receive the kickoff from Garraway. Time to thank one of our scoreboard sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital. Thanks to them, one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital. Quality care close to home. Visit clevelandclinic.org and click on locations to learn more about Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital. So a long drive there ended with a big play, Kyle. Yeah, big, big play, 24-yard touchdown pass from Brady Geibel to Wyatt Wallach on a screen. Um, and and if, if you're East Knox right now, you've got to get something going offensively. You saw some signs of life on the last offensive series, but the drive kind of stalled out. Um, it, this Pirates team, once they get up, you don't want to get down too much to them. A decent return there, out to 31. Brayson Davis with the return. Somebody I'm sure they'd like to get involved in the offense. He had a big game last week for them. Yeah, just just a, uh, a smaller player is Davis. Goes uh, about five, what, what about five, six or so um, from what I saw on the uh, roster. Five, nine, 140, but dangerous out of the slot. So first and 10 for East Knox from the 31-yard line. Elliott gets the handoff. There's a little bit of space over there. Maybe gets about four yards on the carry. Brayson Davis has been averaging 100 yards receiving over the last three games for East Knox. So he's somebody that they like to get the ball out to. Elliott, meanwhile, 1,300 yards over that on the season. They're going to give him two on the carry. I'd give him three. Yeah, I was going to say that's uh, not a lot there, but... Not a very good spot. I, th I thought he, he fell forward for a little bit more, but in any event, three, four yards, that's all you really need. This time they're throwing. Looking underneath, they found him. They're going to call incomplete, though, because the ball came out on the hit. So that was Davis. With the hit was Jensen Garber. Yeah, tough job there. I, I, I mean, looked like he had it in, but... It did come out as he was hitting the ground. Um, good hit by Garber to, to kind of dislodge the ball. Um, made, made sure that when the, when the receiver hit the ground, he was bobbling the ball. So Ruff was right on top of it. Incomplete pass. First incompletion of the night for both teams. Third and seven and a half, I'd say. Ball on the 34-yard line. Looking, at, He's pressured and he's down in the backfield with the sack on the play. Jackson Reifenschneider, 19 tackles for a loss on the season for the senior. And that's going to back them all the way up to the 25. I mean, just a disaster. Twice in this game that's happened. The Pirates just fly in there. No time to throw. So the punt is away. Garber's going to let it bounce, and it's down at about the 38-yard line. So good field position to start for the Pirates. 10-13 to go in the second quarter. Garraway leads East Knox 14 to nothing here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences. And we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kaim Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kaim, built on trust since 1911. Dylan Sunland with a big carry as we return to this game. Close to 20 yards on that carry. I, I give him about 22 on that on that carry. So first down carry for Dylan Sunland goes for 22 yards. Probably the first big run they broke so far against this East Knox front. 
First and ten from the 40. Geibel's an empty backfield this time. He's looking downfield. He's going to throw it this time. He has an open man. Jensen Garber breaks a tackle. He cuts across the field. Down to the 20. He's at the 15. Oh, wow. Another, it's a 10-5. Touchdown, Jensen Garber. Wow, what a run by Jensen Garber. Broke about four tackles. Great job for that young man. So Brady Geibel connects for 40 yards. Jensen Garber, most of that after the catch. Yards after catch, Jensen Garber, big play receiver. And that's, and that's what this Gateway Pirates offense can do. You, you almost get kind of lulled to sleep with the running game, but the explosive ability, these big play abilities of, of the Pirates, um, if, if you're not careful, it can bite you a couple times, and it has in the last two possessions. So Gio Colon in for the extra point. And it is good. So the score is 21 0, 9.32 to go in the second quarter. Garraway over East Knox. Let's thank one of our scoreboard sponsors, First National Bank of Denison, the First National Bank of Denison. Say hello to your dream home with a mortgage loan from the First National Bank of Denison. You can start the process online at fbndenison.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. All right, we'll be right back again. 21 0 is your score here on the Hill in Sugar Creek on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. All right, we're back, 21-0, 9.32. Left in the first half here, Gio Colon set to kick off. Must score here now, I think, for, for East Knox with 9.32 play here in the, second, in, in the first half. I think you've got to get something on the board. You've got to get something working if, for, if, if, if you're East Knox right now, especially getting the ball in the second half to start. So, Kyle, I think after that last touchdown by Jensen Garber, they announced that that was a new school record for touchdowns in a season. This is the 15th touchdown reception uh, this season. Well, and it was it was definitely a memorable one. Um, I thought he was down at about the 20, and it, it, he made a few men miss. He worked his way back across the field. He was always going north and south, never east and west. Uh, it, it was a great, great job by Garber. So the whistle blows and stops the play. Timeout, Pirates. Timeout, All right, 21 0, 9 29 here. Thanks to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, our local Wendy's restaurant. Stop by at any of your local Wendy's following the game. Wendy's, where their recipe is quality. It's a little chilly out here right now. I could go for a bowl of Wendy's chili right now. When it's frosty, you want some chili. Oh, from Wendy's. wow. <laughs> I didn't make that up. You drive by the Wendy's on Tuscarawas Avenue there in Dover. Sometimes that's up on the board. Yeah, it, well, it's it's pretty frosty out here right now, so a couple bowls of that chili I wouldn't mind. Here on the hill in Sugar Creek, it's 21-0. The Pirates lead the East Knox Bulldogs, and East Knox came out throwing that time. I know Blake Elliott is their player. That's their guy. Rushed for over 1,300 yards this season, but they're going to have to score some points in a hurry and they're gonna have to go to the air it looks like yeah and and really probably something that they don't want to do you you would really I, I would think they'd want to keep it on the ground with Elliot um, kind of kind of works so methodically Jax Lester gets it outside number 13 makes a move that's Caden Wingard good gain on first down brings up second and short they're gonna give him nine it looks like Wyatt Wallach in on the tackle there. But, uh, yeah, just what, just what the doctor ordered, a good first pickup uh, on first down, set up second and short. Maybe you want to take a shot deep here. Brayson Davis is on the outside on the left, but they're going to hand it off to Elliott. Patiently running. I don't know if he got the first down, though. It's going to be very close. Got it, Brock, number eight. 
number two, Wyatt Hershberger. Wyatt Hershberger with the tackle. He only needed one, and they're not going to give him one. They're not even going to give him the line to gain. No gain on the play. So brings up third and short. Now you'd think Blake Elliott is capable of getting a yard for them, but they just had a second and one. Still in the shotgun. Jax Lester. He's going to keep it himself, and he is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Didn't get it. Jace Wallach, somebody we talked to earlier, second tackle for a loss. Two tackles for a loss for Jace Wallach today. It's gonna, that's going to be a loss of two. And, uh, man, you, you were sitting second and one, and I was thinking maybe you want to try to take a shot deep, and you get stuffed two plays in a row. What, what a kind of a buzzkill on this offensive series. Yeah, three and out for the Bulldogs. They're going to punt it away. Jensen Garber is back, but he watches Wyatt Wallach take the kickoff. Looking for some space. Comes out he's to the wall. Left. He's going to get out to the 40. He's out to the 30. 25-20 makes a move. Jumps over and gets tackled down to the 15-yard line. He had a wall. I was saying he, he worked his way all the way from the right hash across to the left side of the field. He had a wall lined up, and uh, he was able to take advantage of some great blocking to get all the way down inside the red zone. About a 42-yard return on that play. And there is an injured Bulldog on the field. We hope that he's okay. Right now it is 21 0, 723 to go in the first half. We're going to say thank you to another one of our scoreboard sponsors, Sugar Valley Meats. Sugar Valley Meats, take the short drive to Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive. Turn right, go half a mile, visit online at sugarvalleymeats.com. Proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates. All right, let's take a break here. 21 0, Garraway over East Knox on your sports voice of the Valley. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delator at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. So we're back. It's 21 0 Garraway over East Knox. Dylan Reed got up and walked off, ran off on his own. He's on the sidelines now. Garraway gets a first and 10 from the 15 yard line after that big punt return. Sunland in motion. He's going to not get the ball. Brady Geibel is tackled by about four Bulldogs in the backfield led by number 12, Breyer Householder. I, I wonder if that was a little bit of miscommunication there because um, I, I don't know if someone was maybe supposed to take that. Geibel looked a little bit a little bit surprised that he still had the ball, but uh, it could have also just been the, the great job by the East Knox defensive front getting a lot of penetration right away through that, uh, that Garraway offensive front. I don't know, maybe he didn't have the ball. They only get a loss of one on the play. It looked like he would have lost four. Maybe well, we're confused and someone did have the ball. Forward progress, I guess, when he starts backpedaling. Okay, someone takes the ball this time right up the middle, in for the touchdown for the Pirates. 16-yard touchdown run. Dylan Sundland, fourth touchdown of the game for Garraway. They go up 27-0 with Gio Colon's extra point on the way. Nothing fancy there. That was just right up the middle. Uh, if, if Tony Pellegrino was here, he probably could rattle off the play call, you know. But uh, it, it just, just right off tackle, right up the gut. Uh, a good cut back towards the middle of the field to be able to shake into the second, uh, second tier of the East Knox defense. And, yeah, up 27-0 are the Pirates. Gio Colon's extra point is good. It is 28 to nothing. Very similar to last week's game so far for the Pirates. Last week, uh, Rock Hill was able to score late, make it make it uh, get seven points on the board, and didn't score the rest of the way. But uh, this is how the game went last week for for Garraway. A couple of mistakes by the opposing team sets them up in good field position, and they take advantage of it here. It was that big punt return. 
and it was that interception at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I was going to say that this one obviously was set up by the Wyatt Wallach uh, uh, punt return. Uh, again, about about a 46-yard punt return to get all the way down inside the red zone. A uh, little miscommunication on the first play and the second play just right up the gut for 16, 17 yards and a touchdown. So it's 28 nothing, 6.36 to go in the first half. Thanks to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, T County Boxing Academy. They're the area's number one training center for those who are serious about boxing. They offer a variety of classes for youth and adults along with supplements for the best workouts possible. The T County Boxing Academy is located on East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Follow them on Facebook. 6.36 in the first half, 28 nothing. Garraway over East Knox. Garraway throwing some knockout haymakers right now that uh, Sugar Dre Donovan would be proud of. I think Sugar Dre has another fight coming up after he beat the, uh, I believe it was the Russian last time they played. That ball is at the one yard line. He's going to make something out of it, though. He's at least out to the 18 after mishandling it there. Yeah, that was that was kind of a disaster. It it died right at the goal line. I mean, you're you're hoping if you're if if you're the return man that it takes a, a, a little squirt and goes into the end zone, but uh, picked up at the one and uh, it, tough field position to start now for these Bulldogs inside the 20. So they're at the 18. You know, if you looked at two things that Gary wanted to work on from last week, it was probably kickoffs because they had been two or three go out of bounds. That has worked well for them so far. And the other one is penalties, and they haven't been penalized too much today. There's a run by Blake Elliott. Gets a couple yards. But it's second and long. Second and eight. I'm sure both these teams would like different situations on second down. Second and short opens up the playbook for him. Second and long uh, doesn't give him any options. Yeah, no, and, and that, that's where it, it was really kind of puzzling. The, the last offensive series when you had second and short that you didn't try to open it up a little bit. So he throws it. Oh, oh wow. Goodness. Getting his paws up was Jace Wallach again. He's been in the backfield a lot today. Very, very fortunate on, on that one. Jace Wallach kind of tipped it back and, and just couldn't keep his footing underneath of him or he would have been doing cartwheels in the end zone right now. <laughs> I think the quarterback may have gotten bumped too as he was throwing. Yeah, he, he was hit when he threw. There was a lot of traffic in the backfield uh, from, from that uh, Garraway defensive front. Jackson Schneider was in there as well as Wyatt Hirschberger uh, just kind of cluttering everything up in the backfield. So Jax Lester looking to convert a third and long. Refs didn't like what they saw. Yeah, and now you're going to get backed up again. Uh, a procedure penalty. Pre pretty, uh, pretty clean first half so far. I don't believe Garraway has had any penalties. Um, just a couple here and there for East Knox. So a pretty clean first half. But um, that one's a killer yeah. procedure. Third and long became third and longer. It's going to be third and 13. It looked like they had something interesting there with a pitch into the backfield on third and third and long. We'll see what they call here with 13 yards to go. Well, in, in, in my mind, you, you... Yeah, they're going to think about it. So timeout for East Knox. 5.22 to go in the first half. Garraway up 28 to nothing. <laughs> and we'll be right back here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Attention local businesses, are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delator at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. All right, welcome back to the Hill in Sugar Creek. It is 28-0 with 5.22 to go in the first half. The Pirates are leading the East Knox Bulldogs, and the East Knox Bulldogs are in a tough situation. Third and 13 from the 15-yard line. They have 85 yards to go to their end zone. This, to me, just screams screen. Uh, try to get your athletes out in space and try to get them working um, in, into the secondary, but... 
not what they did. <laughs> try, try just a, a dive to, to Elliott and lost a couple on the play. Jace Wallach again with the tackle in the backfield. He's been back there for, I think, three tackles for a loss and a batted pass so far today. And, and now you're kicking out of your own end zone after a great return from Wyatt Wallach before. You got Wallach and Garber back to receive this punt. I would be very, very, I mean, I'd be shocked if they kicked it to either one of them. I'd, I'd try to kind of angle it and kick it out of bounds. Yeah, but with the angle it from here, and that kick is going to go out of bounds at about the 31-yard line. Well, it was angled. So it only got about, what, a 20, 23-yard punt or so. Right. So it'll be first and 10 for the Pirates this time. They are at the 32-yard line. We'll give them the 32. They've gotten all their offensive players involved so far. Dylan Sundland scored. Jensen Garber scored. Brady Geibel's thrown a couple passes to him. They like to spread it around. Yeah, very, very balanced offense, lots of weapons. You really can't key in on one guy on this Pirates offense. Going someone in the backfield. He'll take the carry up the middle this time. And he's got a hole. He's up the middle again. Big gain on first down. Maybe about 18 yards on the carry. Yeah, again, another patient run. He had, a, he had a guy draped all over him and drug him for about another six yards. So again, we talk about Sunland not being the biggest guy at 5'6", 150, uh, but he, he runs hard, and again, he, he, runs, he runs with a purpose. He's always moving north and south. So first and 10, they can get a first down there at the 12-yard line. Sunland gets it again up the middle. This time, he's tackled quickly but still falls forward for a couple of yards. In on the tackle for Snox, Shane Gardner. They gave him three on the carry. It'll bring up second down and seven. First down at the two yard line, if they can get there. Up 28, nothing. Looks like they're gonna lean on Sunland a lot. Yeah, I, I, I would say. Garber gets the pitch though. He's going around the left side. He finds his way into the end zone for the touchdown for the Pirates. Jensen Garber scores again for Garraway. And that is another reception. Yes, that gives that him, I believe, 16 on the season as he adds to his school record. Touchdown, Pirates 34-0 with Gio Colon's extra point on the way. Yeah, that counts as a forward pass. And so another, another touchdown reception for Jensen Garber. Two on the day for Garber, three through the air right now for Geibel. That is his 16th touchdown reception on the season, and I do believe that is a school record as announced on the PA here. Gio Colon to kick the extra point, and he is perfect. Five for five on the day for Gio Colon, 3.28 to go in the first half. Garraway up 35 to nothing here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. But I don't think it starts with the second half. 35 nothing here. Pirates over the Bulldogs. We have 3.28 to go in the first half. Gio Colon is set to kick it off. Everything going right for the Pirates since that first series. Yeah, not, not a lot to uh, write home about in terms of mistakes for the Pirates. Uh, I, I mean, Geibel is 6-6. Six, six of six. No incompletions, you've got no turnovers. Very, very, I don't think there's been a penalty on, on Garraway as well here in the first half. Excellent kickoff by Gio Colon. A touchback, they'll start from the 20 yard line, Will East Knox, down 35 to nothing. And, 
And I mean, I know that it goes against your identity that that you want to run the ball, but um, at, at at some point down 35, uh, you you've got to try to start to open the game up a little bit, and again try to get your athletes into space, whether it be screens, whether it be you know trying to work the ball down the field with longer passes, but um, just kind of you know two yards in a cloud of dust isn't going to get it when you're down 35. Well, Jax Lester is steadily improved over the course of the season. They get the ball out to their playmaker, number four. He's going to get a first down, and he's going to get about 15 yards on the play. Brayson Davis with the catch and run. Gain of 12. Yeah, ex exactly what exactly what I was saying. Kind of kind of get out, um, get out into space. Get your fast guys out where they can make a move and, and kind of get, get away from all the clutter in the inside. Jack Lester throwing. Oh my gosh, there's so many Pirates Holy in the cow. backfield there. There's four guys on top of him. Uh, I Big mean, pass rush there. No, no time for for Lester to to throw and uh, yeah, a couple couple Pirates just in his face right away. Peyton Keller, Jackson Reifenschneider in there, also in on the play. I think I saw number 55 out there. And there is a player down on the field for East Knox. So we'll take a timeout. It is 35 nothing, 304 to play in the first half here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences. And we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time. Because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center. Your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. We are back. Quarterback Jax Lester is off the field now. He was the one who was hurt, so they're going to uh, bring in a backup. Actually, they're going to have Blake Elliott accept the snap. Looks like, yeah, just kind of a wildcat here. He is met in the backfield. Breaks the first tackle again in the backfield first was Jace Wallach one more time. Wyatt Wallach finished it up, but the first one back there again, Jace Wallach. And it looks like looks like Lester's coming back in, so that's good. You never want to see a young man go down and get hurt, but. Uh, it's good to see him back in now. Blake Elliott's their big player, but Lester's been good the second half of the season. He started the season with seven picks against five TDs. Last five games of the season, eight touchdowns, only three picks. So his improvement has led to the improvement of this team. But it looks like they're going back another five yards. Going back another five yards, and I was just going to say, you know, third and long, this, uh, I, I think screen, this is, this is tailor-made for a screen to try to get at least some yards back. Um, some folks would say this is perfect for a draw, but for a draw to be good, you had you have to be throwing the ball throughout the game. So, you know, I, I, I would look for a screen pass out here. They're able to complete the pass. I mean, it's a nice play. It's to Brayson Davis. I guess it gives them some room to punt, but they are still about 10 yards short of the first down gain of about 15 on the play. So nice play from Jax Lester to his top receiver, Brayson Davis, but they are still well short of a first down. Now the punting game hasn't really been flipping the field for them the last two punts. Not, not with the way that uh, the, the return game, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I mean the punts up until the last one, the punts have been pretty good, but uh, this, uh, this Garraway Pirates return team and special teams as a whole have been setting some walls here in the punt game. So White Wallach and Jensen Garber back. Garber's going to let it bounce. And it's fielded at about the 43-yard line. 35 nothing. there's less than a minute to play here in the first half. Let's take a minute to thank another one of our scoreboard sponsors. This time, 
Hampshire Insurance, proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates and your trusted neighbors in Sugar Creek for over 60 years. Hampshire Insurance has been a cornerstone of the Sugar Creek community, specializing in home, auto, life, commercial, and farm insurance. Contact them today at 330-852-4087. And uh, Joe Hampshire, I got your quotes. I got the email. I'll try to get those to you as soon as possible. 35 nothing. 54.5 seconds left, and they have an empty backfield for Brady Geibel. He's going to throw it short to Dylan Sundlin, who gets past the line of scrimmage. He gets the first down, oh breaks boy. free of a crowd. He's out to the Watch 20. Out. He's out to the 15, 10, and taken out of bounds inside the five. A minute, less than a minute to go in the half, and they're already down inside the five yard line. It's big a, gain on the play. It's about a 51-yard gain. So a screen pass to the speedy Dylan Sunland, who broke through a wall of players, got all the way down to the four-yard line. They got that big three-man backfield there. Stacked eye. Sunland, last one through, gets it down close to the goal line, but they'll mark him down at what looks like about the half-yard line. Yeah, just shy. So we're under 30 seconds to play here in the first half, down to 25. This might be the last play of the half. The ball oh, is ball fumbled. Down. And we'll see if the Pirates fall, were able to fall on it. it. It was recovered by the Pirates, and they were able to take a quick timeout here. So 14.8 to go, 35 nothing. Garraway leading. Maybe just one or two more plays before halftime here. So let's take a minute to thank one of our scoreboard sponsors. Get that all wrapped up. Thanks to Kime in Charm, Ohio. Kime is the destination and trusted source for your home building and woodworking needs. Visit Charm today or online at kimelumber.com. Really kind of the, the first miscue for the Pirates. Uh, just just a, bad, a bad center quarterback exchange. And sometimes you see that when, um, really, I think those, that was the first, first two times tonight, uh, these last two plays out of that stacked eye formation that Brady Geibel's been under center. Most of the time he's been working out of the shotgun. Uh, so sometimes that can get a little wonky the first time you get up underneath the center for a traditional exchange. So 14.8 seconds to go. Ball looks to be spotted at just the one yard line. Garraway is leading 35 to nothing. They want to put the nail in the coffin here to end the first half. So even a touchdown would prevent, even if they, uh, East Knox was able to score a touchdown in the second half, the running clock would still begin. Garraway still with a timeout left. Sunland takes the pitch. And he's into the end zone. Sunland with the one-yard touchdown run to put the Pirates up 41 to nothing with 10 seconds to go in the first half. Gio Colon's extra point is on the way. Nice pitch, get, get Sunland out into space, let him operate a little bit, and he was able to cut back and uh, kind of find an opening and just, you know, when you only need one or two yards, all you, you have the, the luxury of just kind of ducking your head and diving to cross the plane. So Sunland scores in what is likely his last play of the game. You're up 42 to nothing here. Might want to take your star running back out. Gio Colon with the extra point. 42 to nothing, 10 seconds to go in the first half. We'll be right back on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. So Dylan Sullen with his third touchdown run of the game bring, brings the score to 42 to nothing. Garraway over East Knox, 10.1 seconds left in the first half. Gio Colon back into kickoff. He's had a really good game today. I mean, you don't often talk about the kicker when you're scoring touchdowns, but he's made all of his extra points, and his kickoff game has been on point, too. 
if you're talking about a kicker, it's either because he kicked the game-winning field goal or he missed the game-winning field goal. <laughs> That's about the only time that the kicker, if you're not talking about a kicker, that means he's steady, he's doing his job and uh, flying under the radar. That's a touchback. Now, he didn't catch it, but that doesn't matter. It's a touchback because it's in the end zone. So East Knox takes over at the 20-yard line. There's only 10 seconds to go. I don't imagine much is going to happen in those 10 seconds. And, you know, East Knox gets the ball to start the second half. I, I, I probably would just take a knee here, go into, go into the, the locker room, try to regroup and lick your wounds a little bit and um, try to get your seniors a little bit of playing time here in the second half. So looks like you're right. Looks like they're about to take a knee. Bring us into halftime with the score 42 to nothing. Clock is winding down. It will be running consistently when the second half starts. And the score is 42 to nothing. Garraway over East Knox. We bring you halftime and we'll be right back on your sports voice of the Valley. Hey there, Garraway Pirate fans. For over 60 years, Hampshire Insurance has been a cornerstone of the Sugar Creek community specializing in home, auto, life, commercial, and farm insurance. With their friendly and efficient service, you can rest easy knowing Hampshire Insurance is providing a path forward when the unthinkable happens. Give them a call at 330-852-4087. Hampshire Insurance, proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates and your trusted neighbors in Sugar Creek. There are a lot of steps between conceiving, carrying, and cradling your baby. No matter what stage of motherhood you're in, our team at Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital will be there every step of the way. From your first visit to your first baby, we provide expert care right in the Tuscarawas Valley. Our team partners with each patient to create a custom birthing plan, ensuring the comfort and health of you and your baby for every care in the world. To learn more or schedule an appointment, visit unionhospital.org motherhood. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. Welcome back to the Hill in Sugar Creek. We have Garraway leading East Knox 42 to nothing at halftime of this game. It will be a running clock at the start of the second half. So far in this game, it has been all Garraway. Now, they didn't start out the game as well as they would have liked. They, they punted it away to begin with, but then there was an interception just at the line of scrimmage, turned the ball over. East Knox turned it over to Garraway. Pirates scored. And then scored a whole bunch more. It's 42 to nothing at halftime. So we mentioned before the game that the IVC South player of the game is Jensen Garber of the Garraway Pirates, their big time receiver. But let's take a moment to recognize some of the other IVC all conference team selections for the Garraway Pirates. On the first team joining Jensen Garber is Clayton Downs, Peyton Keller, Wyatt Hirschberger. Jackson, Reifenschneider, and Wyatt Wallach. All those players are seniors, and they are first-team IVC South selections. And we have to mention the Coach of the Year once again is Jason Wallach of the Garraway Pirates. So congratulations to Coach Wallach. Second-team IVC South recipients for the Garraway Pirates, Brady Geibel, the quarterback, Ethan Kimball, who had a big interception, returned for a touchdown last week, and Jake Miller, second-team All-IVC South players there. And honorable mention, Dylan Sunlin, who's been the star of the playoffs so far for the Garraway Pirates. Six touchdowns in two games in the first half of both of those games. Scored three touchdowns in the first half last week. Three touchdowns in the first half this week. So Dylan Sunlin, I would suggest, is the most valuable player for the Pirates so far in these playoffs. Again, Garraway's up 42 to nothing here. Three touchdowns in the first half for Dylan Sunlin. And again, the Pirates up 42 to 0. Big plays on defense by Jace Wallach in the backfield all day. Wyatt Wallach had a big punt return. 
and not many incomplete passes for the quarterback, Brady Geibel, for the Garraway Pirates. I'm Bill Hammerstrom. I'm here with Kyle Minnis. Kyle is compiling all the statistics that he took in the first half. Yes, trying to trying to add up all these numbers for the Pirates here. I'm going to have to get my abacus out. <laughs> Dominant first half for the Garraway Pirates as they lead 42 to nothing. Let's give a shout out to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, Kime. Kime in Charm, Ohio, the destination and trusted source for your home building and woodworking needs. Visit in Charm today or online at kimelumber.com. And thanks to the Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital, another one of the scoreboard sponsors. Quality care close to home. Visit clevelandclinic.org and click on locations to learn more about Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital. We have a 42 to nothing score. Garraway over East Knox here on the hill in Sugar Creek. And we will come back here on your sports voice of the Valley. The First National Bank of Denison is proud to be your locally owned community bank. As a community bank, they're also proud to be a sponsor of today's game. Supporting local high school athletics is just one way the First National Bank gives back to the schools and communities that have helped make them successful. The First National Bank of Denison, proud to be your locally owned community bank. Visit them online at fnbdenison.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Wendy's new breakfast two for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for $3 Biggie Bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price and participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. All right, we are back. It is 42 to nothing. The Snack Bulldogs band is on the field. Number 43 for the football team is out there. Looks like he's playing tenor saxophone. So, well-rounded student out there playing with the East Knox band. 42 to nothing, Garraway over East Knox. It's been all Pirates in the first half. I'm Bill Hammerstrom. I'm with Kyle Bennett. He is putting together all of the scores tonight. I'm sure there's a big line over there at the concession stand as everybody wants a piece of homemade pie that they sell here. Oh, man. Warm pumpkin pie. Now, I had the chocolate peanut butter, but it's my third uh, third game that I've called here. I, I have had the pumpkin pie, and this is actually number two for the uh, chocolate peanut butter. So Garraway here is leading 42 to nothing. If they hold on to win, which seems likely they will advance to the third round, that will be a road game for the Pirates. Waiting them is the winner of the game between Gloucester Trimble and Galleon Northmore. Northmore is in the same conference as East Knox, and Northmore beat East Knox this season. Northmore's nine and two. Gloucester Trimble is six and four. Garraway is the number one seed in their region. It's Region 23 in Division 6. Number two seed is West Jefferson that had a 9-1 regular season. If you look at all of Division 6, there are only two undefeated teams this, this season in the division. Garraway is one of them. The other one is Cincinnati Country Day. So Garraway gets the number one seed in Region 23 in that uh, undefeated Country Day school in Cincinnati. They are a three seed in their Region 24. The OHSAA provided some statistics about the first round last week. The number one seeds were 28 and 0 in the first round. Number two seeds were 25 and 3, as were the number three seeds. In fact, all the seeds, number one through six, were either 25, 24, or 22 wins out of 28 tries against their opponents. Even the number seven seed was 20 and eight. Now between the number eight and nine seeds, it was a little closer. 18 number nine seeds advanced. So 18 upsets in the eight, nine matchup. They also said that uh, two regions were chalk, which means two regions, all the top seeds advanced. Five regions had three or more upset, upsets. That includes the region that Garraway is in. There were three upsets there. In Region 5, there were four upsets. And in one 
region, Region 28, there's a quarterfinal game that pits a 14 seed St. Henry at number 11, Fort Loramir. Some other games, maybe we'll have some scores on later as we look them up. Millersburg West Holmes has a home game, one of the only teams in the area other than Garraway with a home game. They take on Galleon in Division 4, Region 14. Also in Division 4, Indian Valley is on the road as a 13 seed. They're 8 and 3 against Columbus Bishop Reddy. Sandy Valley is in Division 5, Region 17. They have a tough matchup against the number one seed Perry, the team that eliminated the Pirates from the playoffs last year. Another IVC South team is in that same region, Ridgewood. They are at South Range Canfield. 10 and 1 Canfield team, always a tough out. And of course the Pirates are here in Division 6. In Division 7, Malvern is a five seed and they are hosting a game against Norwalk St. Paul today. So those are the area teams that are still alive in the playoffs. Some of the bigger divisions matchups today include Cleveland St. Ignatius at Canton McKinley. St. Ignatius is two and eight on the season. So they entered the playoffs with one win and a 12 seed. And with one win qualifying for the playoffs, the 12 beat the five. Kyle, you know who that five seed was? Oh, I know. I, I, I shudder to say, but it was your Menor Cardinals, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh, Menor graduate right here. Can never beat St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius has two official wins on the season. Both of those wins are over the Mentor Cardinals by two points and three points in two separate games. When I went to school, St. Ignatius was beating Mentor uh, by 40 points, so at least they've made some progress in the uh, 30 years since I graduated. All right, I think maybe we're ready for these statistics here as Garraway leads East Knox 42 to nothing. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll look at... Um, I guess for some team statistics, well, all you need to know team-wise, we'll look at total yards. Garraway, total yards in the first half, 279. Total yards for East Knox, 47. So that is a tough one. We'll look at um, individuals. First for East Knox, through the air, Jax Lester was four of six for 61 yards. Catching those passes were Brayson Davis, catching two of those passes for 27 yards. Caden Wengert with two catches for 34 yards. On the ground, Lester, most of these are sacks, but six carries for Jax, Jax Lester for negative 26 yards. And Blake Elliott, nine carries for just 12 yards. So negative 14 yards on the ground for East Knox. For the Garraway Pirates, Brady Geibel, a perfect 7 of 7 through the air. 156 yards and three touchdowns. Catching those touchdown passes were Jensen Garber. He ended the first half with four receptions, 75 yards, two of those four touchdowns. Wyatt Wallet caught a pass for 24 yards for a touchdown, rounding out the receptions. Dylan Sunland with one reception for 51 yards and Braden Raber, one reception for six yards. On the ground, Brady Geibel with eight carries for 26 yards, but the big workhorse has been Dylan Sunland, 12 carries for 97 yards, three touchdowns on the ground for Dylan Sunland too. And that's how we are standing at 42-0 now here at halftime. So Kyle, I know at the end of the game, we offer the Subway player of the game. We're probably gonna pick from one of those guys because the second half is not gonna add too many statistics onto uh, the statistic that those guys already have. We're gonna have a running clock. It's gonna go pretty quickly. But looking at that, and I, I said this earlier, Dylan Sunland has six touchdowns in two playoff games. He's definitely one of their MVPs so far. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would say Sunland has has had a whale of a game. Garber, um, really Wyatt Wallach, too, uh, caught the screen pass for a touchdown, um, has played really well defensively and in special teams, had, the, had about that 45-yard punt return to set up the second or third touchdown of the night. So um, we, we've, got a, we've got a tough decision to make. And then 
Jace Wallach, number 11 on defense, has been in the backfield a whole lot today with a batted pass and a few tackles for loss. Yeah, um, also on defense, um, Wyatt, uh, no, uh, Reifenschneider, Jackson Reifenschneider, uh, has just made uh, Jackson, uh, Lester. Jackson Lester's life just an absolute nightmare. Um, he has been in his face all night long. And I, I, I think at this point now, when, when, when you've got a running clock, it's just so hard to get, get out of it. Um, you're, you're probably looking for these, these Bulldogs to, I don't, I don't want to say kind of, you know, lay down, but to try to, let's get, let's, let's get the season completed. And um, the Pirates are going to probably play some younger kids. Uh, to, to kind of get get out of this game and move on to play either Northmore or Trimble next week. I think you're going to see a lot of Luis Wall in the second half for the Pirates. He's their backup running back, and he does a good job when he comes in late in the game. And let's see, a quarterback is going to be one of the Wallachs. We'll see when they take the field. One of the wallets. One, there's so many There's wallets so there. many to, to, to choose from. Usually you're good if you say Wallach or if you say Wyatt, because I think there's like three Wyatts on the team too. Big Tombstone fans here in Sugar Creek. Got, gotcha. <laughs> uh, there's a, uh, a, a <sighs> where it gets really confusing though is when you've got multiples on the field and you can say Wyatt to Wyatt, Wallach to Wallach, Wallach to Wyatt, Wyatt to Wallach. <laughs> we're gonna turn to Abbott and Costello before this uh, game is over here. All right, we're at 42 to nothing. We're at halftime. Gonna take the field in about five minutes and uh, we'll be back here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Subway is upping their game with the All-Star Subway Series menu. Like number 16, the All-Pro Sweet Onion Teriyaki, a new twist on an old favorite. Or number 18, the new Ultimate BMT with salami, pepperoni, and Black Forest ham topped off with extra provolone. And all of the new Subway Series subs are piled with cheese and fresh, tasty toppings. I can't wait to try them all. It's the Subway Series menu, Subway's tastiest menu yet. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. All right, we're back on the hill in Sugar Creek. It's 42 to nothing. We're at halftime. I'm Bill Hammerstrom. I'm with Kyle Minnis, and we've been looking at some of the other scores for the area. Tough goings for the IVC. Right, Kyle? Yeah, so uh, Garraway notwithstanding, tough night for Newcomerstown. They're down 43 nothing at half to Fort Fry. Um, at halftime, Ridgewood. Down 28 nothing to defending state champs Canfield South Range. Sandy Valley is down 21 nothing to number one seed the uh, Perry Pirates out of Perry, Ohio. And Malvern trailing 7 nothing to kind of a Cinderella story, a number 12 seed, the St. Paul Flyers out of Norwalk. Now, one score that I haven't seen updated online is uh, Indian Valley. I have a report that it's 21 to 10. Indian Valley is winning at halftime over uh, Bishop Reddy. So Indian Valley and, and Garraway might be carrying the torch forward for the IVC, just as they did at this time last year. Indian Valley made a deep run into the playoffs. Garraway ran into the Pirates, I believe in a, in a regional semifinal. Garraway ran into the Perry Pirates of Lake County. Yeah, and, and they're... they're uh... <laughs> They're really good. The, <laughs> the Perry Pirates are, are very, very good. They're, they're the number one seed in that region for a reason. Now, Garraway doesn't have to worry about them, though, because Garraway dropped down to Division Six this year out of Division Five. Yeah, so, I, I, I mean, obviously you don't want to look down too far down the line, but um, 
The Kirtland Hornets uh, are a perennial power, and they're they're in Region uh, 22, I believe. So that potentially could. I mean, if 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 the Pirates are worried about the Kirtland Hornets, that would be the state championship game. So uh, <laughs> you 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 would hope that uh, hope that we could see that matchup because it would be happening in Tom Benson Stadium. So we're 42 nothing Garraway over East Knox here talking about some of the other action across the state as this is the second round of the state playoff. I mentioned that in the second round, the number one seeded teams are were 25 at three last year. So uh, Garraway is living up to their number one seed here, 42 to nothing with just a couple minutes left until the teams take the field. And you know, the crazy thing is, um, it, you know, these number one seeds would be taking on either a number eight or a number nine seed, which up until 2020, the COVID season, would have been the first round of the playoffs. The number one seed taking on a number eight seed. And it was very, very rare, um, you, you know, 2018, 2019, to see a number eight seed take out a number one seed. So now even more rare. The OHSAA provided these statistics about the record of the higher seeded teams in the playoffs, and it's really lopsided for the higher seeded team. You hear a lot of conversations from coaches and others about there's too many teams in the playoffs. I mean, that kind of makes the argument for them that, that for the one, two, and three seeds, there's only been, you know, only six times last year out of, you know, 75 plus eight, more than 80 games that, that the uh, – lower seeded team one against the one two three and if you had the four seed it, it's just ten times yeah and usually the ohsaa wants to highlight those cinderella stories to kind of make the argument of saying you know oh look there were there were three 15 seeds that pulled off upsets over twos and uh yeah it, it's kind of one of those things that um <sighs> The more things change, the more they stay the same. There's never been a number one seed lose to a 16 seed. I don't know what the answer is. I don't know if you try to pare it down and go to, say, 12 teams make it and the first four get a, get a buy. I, I'm sure some coaches would say, we don't want to buy. But, um, you know, the crazy thing is the state championship game would be week 17. That would be the 17th straight game played for 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. Now, the Ohio State Buckeyes take a bye week. The Cleveland Browns take a bye week. Um, but these high, school guys, these high school kids would be playing in their 17th straight game, 7th, 17th straight week uh, with no breaks, no buys. And uh, some would say that's just too much. And... That last game is in December. Yeah. So so your your first game was the middle of August. I, I mean, talk about a sport that is spanning the seasons. Uh, I mean, your, your first game, there were heat advisories, 90-degree <laughs> weather. Your last game very easily could be in snow in Canton. And your, your, your high school state championship game, comes after the Ohio State Michigan game. I think it's about the same weekend as maybe the Big 10 championship game. That's that, that's crazy. Again, I don't know what the answer is. I, I think once this there there's no putting this toothpaste back in the tube once you've started the whole 16 team thing. Uh, I know that coaches, I don't want to say they hate it, but um, it, it, coaches would never say this. But a team that you know, say maybe lost their last three or four games and ended a season seven and or three and seven, four and six, five and five. I don't know if there's a lot of coaches that would say, "Hey, we feel really good about moving forward into the playoffs now." You know. At the same time, you know, we cover some teams talking about Dover and New Philadelphia, who would not have been in the playoffs under any previous format. And, and while those coaches maybe at a different point in the season might say there's too many teams, uh, I, I think they were happy to have their kids for, for at least an extra week. I don't know that they would trade yeah. that. 
Yeah, and, and it, it varies by region, too. You saw, I, I mean, that Region 9 was a very, very competitive region. Um, every team that made the playoffs had a winning record. And, you, you, you know, teams like Dover that played a very competitive schedule, New Philadelphia as well in the OCC. Um, it, there, there are some some regions in lower lower regions that every team was eight and two seven and three and then you see some regions higher up in the big school division where you got two and eight ignatius making the playoffs I, i'm sorry if you're two and eight i don't think you deserve a spot in the playoffs um it it, it just kind of waters down the regular season a little too much i think all right, we're getting set to kick the ball off here. East Knox will receive. So what do you think of the IBC South Player of the Year, Jensen Garber? You got a chance to watch him. Usually he only gets to play in the first half because they have so many running clocks. And Sh shifty, shifty. Very good with the ball in open space. Um, a great defensive player as well. But, again, just kind of what I said it at, at the beginning of the broadcast, a technician with his route running. Once he gets open and he gets the ball, now you can be flashy. You don't need to be flashy to run your routes. You just need to be be in the right place at the right time. Once you get the ball in your hands, now you can get fancy and you can get flashy, and he can definitely do that as well. All right, Gio Colon with the nice kickoff once again. And they'll bounce through the end zone. So touchback. They'll get the ball at the 20-yard line to start the second half here. Again, it's 42 nothing. Just getting started in the third quarter. And how about Brady Geibel? We might have seen the last of him as well. The decision-making didn't throw an incomplete pass. And uh, early on, now he, he lost some yardage there, but he did not throw into any tight coverage. Yeah, no, he, he's yeah, – I, I would be very shocked to see him come back out. And he's going to end a perfect 7-7. Perfect seven seven. No miscommunication on the first play. Yeah, I, I, I think Davis uh, Davis went on a go round, and uh, Lester was looking for him to come back to the ball. Jax Lester got hurt in the first half. It's nice to see him out there in the backfield again. Counting down in the third quarter. Jax Lester in the shotgun. This time he hands it off to Blake Elliott, who finds a hole. Gains out to the 25-yard line. They'll give him five on the play, and they'll bring up third down and five. Here are some new names on defense for the Pirates coming up with some of these plays as well. We'll try to get some of those players' names out there as they're playing in the second half here. Completed pass out here to number 13. He gets the first down. He's out to the 40, and he's almost to midfield, down at the 48-yard line. That's Wenger. He caught a couple passes in the first half. Pirates have shut down their playmaker, Brayson Davis, but Wingard has picked it up. 21 yards on that reception. So again, second team defense is out there. You don't see uh, some of those seniors who made the all IVC South first team like Jackson Reif and Snyder in the game. Incomplete pass. Too high. Jax Lesser's pass is incomplete. It was tenor for number four, Grayson Davis. Coverage on the play by number four, Cannon Gone. So second and long. What people say is they marvel at the size of the roster for the Garraway Pirates, for a Division VI school, all the kids on the football team out there. Uh, listen, it's, it's, I don't want to say it's intimidating, but it definitely opens your eyes when you see from about the 35 to the 35 stretched out. Blake Elliott carries a couple tackle, tacklers for an extra yard, gains four or five on the play. Bring up third and five for the Bulldogs. Third 
Clock's moving here in the second half again with with a running clock, 42 to nothing. So um, you're you're only going to see both teams with probably a couple possessions here in the second half. That time he finds a hole. Elliott gets down to the 20 yard line, down to the 15. Big carry for Blake Elliott for the East Knox Bulldogs. Yeah, pickup of, uh, let's see, give him 22 on that play. So things the clock does not stop for, first downs, incomplete passes, clock still running. Elliott gets the ball again, coming around the left side, cuts it back. It's like he's got another first down for the Bulldogs. Gain of 11 on the play. So getting some other defenders in there. Jalen Jimenez, Wyatt Miller, another Wyatt. So Blake Elliott with a short gain on that play for the Bulldogs. About three on that carry. First trip inside the red zone for the Bulldogs tonight. There on the nine yard line. Larson looking to pass, sees a receiver to the corner, and he caught it, kept both feet in bounds. What a great catch. Wenger, Wenger again. Wenger, great catch, didn't get into the end zone, but uh, about an eight yard pickup. Gives him a first and goal from the one. And just like that, Kyle, we are halfway through the third quarter. This this running clock is, uh, it, it's, it's designed to keep kids safe and to get the get the teams off the field as quickly as possible and it definitely does just that. So Jax hands it off to Elliott. Elliott tries to cut up the middle and they gave him the touchdown. One yard touchdown plunge for Blake Elliott for the East Knox Bulldogs. 42 to six now. Garraway over East Knox. Clock is still running five minutes and 45 seconds to play in the third quarter. Somebody has been saving confetti all game on the East Knox sideline. <laughs> able, to, able to let it loose now here with five and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. So Will Jensen kicks it through for the extra point. Follow up the Blake Elliott touchdown, 42 to seven. Garraway over East Knox. 5.23 to go here in the third quarter from the Hill and Sugar Creek on your sports voice of the Valley. Attention local businesses. Are you looking to expand, invest, or start a new venture? This is Chris Delatour at the Commercial and Savings Bank. We know that growing your business takes more than just hard work. It takes the right financial partner. At CSB, we offer a range of commercial lending solutions tailored to your unique needs. From equipment financing to expansion loans, our team of experts is ready to support your success. Call or text us at 800-654-9015 to discuss your business goals today. The Commercial and Savings Bank, empowering local businesses. Member FDIC. Set to kick off the East Knox, number three, Will Jensen. It's 42 to seven, Garraway is leading over East Knox, 523 to play here in the third quarter. Running clock continues, the 30 points is the margin that that running clock starts at, and we are at 35. So Garraway's probably not gonna wanna let the uh, Bulldogs score again. No, and, and I, th I think if you're the Pirates, get your second team, probably going to see your second team offense in. That's a sense of pride. I mean, hey, we, we, we want to score just like, the, just like the first team has scored. Ball is fielded, taken out to the 20. Down to the 25, dragging a tackler with him was Jalen Jimenez. 
42-7 is the score thanks to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, our local Wendy's restaurant. Stop by at any of your local Wendy's following the game. Wendy's, where their recipe is quality. Feeling frosty, get some chili from you, Wendy's. You keep you keep reading that spot. I keep keep thinking to myself, man, by the time I get home, a couple bowls of Wendy's chili would uh, hit the spot here. All right, first and 10, second team offense. like Jalen Jimenez is going to be taking the snaps. Nope, he's going to be in the backfield. Chase Wallach off a terrific defensive first half is now the quarterback in the second half. Luis Wall is their backup running back and he loses three yards on the carry. Householder with the stop for East Knox. 42 to 7, thanks to another one of our scoreboard sponsors, the First National Bank of Denison. Say hello to your dream home with a mortgage loan from the First National Bank of Denison. You can start the process online at fnbdenison.com. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Just three and a half minutes here in the third quarter. Hey, he breaks a tackle. He Whoa. gets out there. <laughs> nice run. We thought he was tackled for no gain on the play. Instead, it's a gain of close to 20 yards for Luis Wall. Wow, give him 22 yards on that play. I thought he was dead to rights in the backfield. Luis Wall gets the yo-ho-ho -ho from the broadcast team over there. Down to three minutes in the third quarter. So we've seen Luis Wall come into these games late. I think every game I've covered for Garraway, it's been a running clock in the second half. But he's a talented back. Uh, you're behind Dylan Sunland, so hard to get some carries on the first team there. Yeah, 5'6", 205. So kind of a squattier, uh, uh, thicker running back. Maybe a little bit more power. He gets it again, finds another hole, spins around and is taken down after a gain of about eight. Will Jensen on the tackle for East Knox. 2.20 to play here. Score is 42 to seven in the third quarter. Thanks again to another one of our scoreboard sponsors, Sugar Valley Meats. Take the short drive to Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive. Turn right and go half a mile. Visit online at sugarvalleymeats.com. Proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates. So again, we have Chase Wallach at quarterback for the Pirates. Luis Wall has been their featured back thus far. It's going to be Jimenez. To the 49-yard line of the Bulldogs, third down. Third down and three coming up for the Pirates. Jalen Jimenez with the carry, gain of about four. We are closing in on a minute to play in the third quarter. By the time they get the snap off, there'll be about a minute and two seconds. They're letting the play clock run down under 10 seconds every time. Close to a first down on the carry. I think they're going to give him the first down. Jimenez gets the three needed and gets the first down. They're going to give him four on that play. They now cross midfield. They're at the 45-yard line, and we are under 40 seconds. This will be the last play of the third quarter. So Luis Wall gets the carry. He doesn't want to go down, but I think they're going to give him a loss. They're going to give him the line of scrimmage on the play. And we're going to run out of time here in the third quarter. The score is 42-7, Garraway over East Knox. We are headed to 
a fourth quarter that's going to take about 12 minutes to play here on your sports voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. In the rolling hills of Holmes County, we tend to do things a bit differently. At Kime, we're in the business of uncommon experiences, and we're here to care for your project like we care for our own. We believe that quality matters and want to help you get it right the first time because your project deserves it. So visit Kime Home Center, your source and destination for all things home, building, and woodworking. Kime, built on trust since 1911. All right, welcome back to the Hill in Sugar Creek. Score is 42-7. to seven. The fourth quarter has started. They don't have to run a play for the clock to start. We are already inside of 12 minutes of the fourth quarter. And Garraway is driving with their second team offense on the field. Jace Wallach leading the team. Luis Wall, Jimenez in the backfield. And and just what, what I, I said you want to see if, if you're... Jason Wallach, you want to see these younger kids come out and have a sense of pride and say, you know what, we owe it to the seniors to put some points on the board. Jimenez gets the carry, but he's stopped in the backfield for a loss of five on the play. Breyer, householder again with the tackle for East Knox. So now third and long, are you going to let... Jace Wallach unsheath the sword, so to speak, and let one fly? I would. I'd throw it deep, and if it's intercepted, then it's uh, like a punt. That's a punt. Yep, exactly. They, they agree with my call. They agree with you. <laughs> Jimenez gets the carry, and he's going to get a good game, but not close to the third down. Maybe gets nine, ten. And they should bring out Gio Colon to try the 58-yard field goal. Yeah, up to the 40. I mean, that would be a, that'd be over a 50-yard, that'd be a, 55-yard field goal. If you got about another 10 yards, maybe give it a shot. But Well, they still have Wallach in there at quarterback, so they're not punting unless it's a pooch punt. Hands the ball off. Luis Wall. That's Wall again. He looks like he's out past the first down marker. That is a first down for the Pirates. Great job by Luis Wall. That's uh, Wall just a just a junior. He'll be back next year, and that gives the uh, the Pirates a little what do you call it? Maybe a little thunder to go with the lightning. <laughs> well, Dylan Sumlin had a great first half for the Pirates. Rushed for three touchdowns. Luis Wall's getting the majority of the carries here in the second half, and he's making use of it. Forty-two to seven is our score. The clock is running constantly. We are down to 9 minutes and 10 seconds to go in the game. This time Jimenez gets the carry. Looking for the corner. Cuts back inside. Nice gain on first down. About 5 yards on the carry. And the score right now 42-7 to seven, under 9 minutes to play. Thanks to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, T County Boxing Academy. They're the area's number one training center for those who are serious about boxing. They offer a variety of classes for youth and adults, along with supplements for the best workouts possible. The T County Boxing Academy is located on East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Follow them on Facebook. And follow Sugar Dre Donovan on Facebook, too. Fighting out of T County Boxing Academy. Luis Wall looking for the corner on the right side. He'll gain a couple. 
number 40, Luis Hall on the carry. Yeah, just going to give him a couple yards on that one. Uh, you, you'd think a, I would like to see a a kid that's built that low to the ground that's got some power maybe try to put his head down a little bit. But they gave him the line to gain, so gave him a gain of three. So first and ten from the 19-yard line. First down comes at the nine. And we're seven and a half to go. In the game, Pirates leading 42 to seven. Luis Wall takes it this time a little more up the middle with a big gain. Carrying Still tacklers feet. down to the six yard line. One of Kyle Minnis' new favorite players, Luis Wall, dragging tacklers inside the 10, gives them a first and goal from the seven. 15 yard pickup. So six minutes, 50 seconds to play in the game. Running clock here in the second half and second team on the field for the Pirates. New quarterback in. Is that Jimenez with the carry? Looks like it. Not a lot there, though. I don't think they're going to give him any, any forward progress. So in a quarterback is Christian Raber for the Garraway Pirates. Going to the third string quarterback, Jace Wallach had a full day on defense before he stepped in as the backup on offensive side of the ball as quarterback. Just about six minutes to play here. Left in the ball game. So here's Raber with the high snap. Gets it to Luis Wall. Cuts it back inside. Spins around. And is dropped at about the four yard line. Brings up third and goal from the four. 42 to seven, five and a half to go. Thanks to one of tonight's scoreboard sponsors, the Commercial and Savings Bank. With CSB, you gain more than convenient access to products and services. You're invited into a network of relationships that contribute to the well-being of our community. Learn more at csb1.com. And visit locations in New Philadelphia, Sugar Creek, Bolivar, and Janaden Hutton. Of course, Garraway milking the clock. Less than 10 to go on the play clock. Less than 5 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the game. We got Ray we're getting the shotgun snap. He's going to hand it off, I believe, to Jimenez again. He didn't get there. I think they, they're not going to give him maybe about a yard. So fourth and goal from the three-yard line. Now here's where do you let Gio Cologne kick a field goal here at your last home game, or do you? They did last week, and the score at the time that he kicked it was 42 to seven, and the final score of the game was 45 to seven. Wow. So they're in the same situation they were a week ago. The only way Gio's coming out on the field is if it's for an extra point now, because they're going for it. So Ravers getting the shotgun snap. Takes it up the middle and wow. in for the touchdown. Luis Wall rewarded for his effort so far with the touchdown for the Garraway Pirates. Puts Garraway up 48 to seven. Under four minutes to play in the game. The clock continues to run as East Knox season is about to come to an end at the hands of the number one seed undefeated Garraway Pirates. We'll be right back here on your sports voice of the Valley. There are a lot of steps between conceiving, carrying, and cradling your baby. No matter what stage of motherhood you're in, our team at Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital will be there every step of the way. From your first visit to your first baby, we provide expert care right in the Tuscarawas Valley. Our team partners with each patient to create a custom birthing plan, ensuring the comfort and health of you and your baby for every care in the world. To learn more or schedule an appointment, visit unionhospital.org motherhood. 
All right, we're back. Pirates run out onto the field for the extra point. Joe Colon is in a bit of a hurry. I think they're not going to get it off. Well, they're going to give it to him. So the extra point is good. It is 49 to 7. So I think that was planned. I think they were working on something and they were coming they had the kicking team on the sidelines and they waited until it got down to 10 seconds on the play clock and sent the kicking team in this is trying to see how quickly you can get your kicking team down set and get the snap off just in case there's a scenario where you don't have any kind of timeouts clock running you need to get a, ki a kick off quick um, Jason Wallach always finding something to work on even in a 48 to 7 ball game he, uh, he, he was able to find something to work on, and it was successful con conversion, 49-7 with three minutes to play in the ballgame. There is a reason why he is the IBC South Coach of the Year. 49-7, Garraway over East Knox. Scouting for next week starts in the morning. They probably have somebody already at the game where it looked like uh, one of East Knox's conference opponents was going to be yeah Gallion Northmore Northmore that's right Northmore with no E North M-O-R so so Jace Wallet kicked it off out to about the 24 yard line always like to see in college games and pro games when they let position players try to kick there are less than two and a half minutes to play in this game we're going to have to start thinking about our subway player of the game and he likely came out of the game at halftime yeah, so Subway player of the first half, I <laughs> guess. <laughs> I, not that he's the Subway player of the game yet. We haven't picked yet, but uh, it's amazing to me that Jensen Garber uh, was able to win the IVC South Player of the Year. Here's number two with the carry. Big gain on the play, about 17 yards. Aaron White with the carry for East Knox. But Jensen Garber over 1,000 yards receiving. He just went over last week for the Pirates getting all of those statistics essentially in the first half of games uh, drew enough attention from the IVC South coaches that they picked in the player of the year. White with the carry again, this time about four yards. Give him three. And East Knox calls a timeout to stop the clock with a minute 20 to go in the game. 49-7 is the score. We'll be right back on your Sports Voice of the Valley. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. All right, we are back on the hill in Sugar Creek. A minute 20 to go in this game, 49-7. to East Knox called a timeout. Trying to get one more score here with their second team in as well before the end of the game. Garraway, I'm sure, does not want to give up a score here. Seven is as much, I think, as Jason Wallach's going to allow if they want a positive half or locker room experience after this game. Yeah, I, I, again, this is something that the younger kids... Um, it's it's a sense of pride. So these upperclassmen that came in and busted their butt in the first half, you owe it to them not to let another score on the scoreboard. So Luke Holtzinger able to find some space out there for East Knox. Gets a first down run, gain of about seven on the carry. Number 71, Jonathan Gilmer. Jonathan Dahmer getting his name called aloud out there as part of the second team defense, making a lot of tackles for the Garraway Pirates. 
We are under 40 seconds just now in the game. Uh, no more timeouts, I guess, for East Knox. This could be your last play of the game as Garraway leads 49-7. to East Knox out there. Luke Holsinger again with the carry. Gets about two yards. And I think that's going to be it. Garraway is lining up for the handshake. Clock is going to expire. Garraway, the number one seed. 11-0 coming into this game. 12-0 coming out of this game. They advance to the third round of the Division Six playoffs with a 49-7 win over East Knox. We will come back with your post-game report statistics and your subway player of the game right here on your Sports Voice of the Valley. The First National Bank of Denison is proud to be your locally owned community bank. As a community bank, they're also proud to be a sponsor of today's game. Supporting local high school athletics is just one way the First National Bank gives back to the schools and communities that have helped make them successful. The First National Bank of Denison, proud to be your locally owned community bank. Visit them online at fnbdenison.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Wendy's new breakfast two for $3 Biggie Bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for $3 Biggie Bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. Hey there, Garraway Pirate fans. For over 60 years, Hampshire Insurance has been a cornerstone of the Sugar Creek community specializing in home, auto, life, commercial, and farm insurance. With their friendly and efficient service, you can rest easy knowing Hampshire Insurance is providing a path forward when the unthinkable happens. Give them a call at 330-852-4087. Hampshire Insurance, proud supporters of the Garraway Pirates and your trusted neighbors in Sugar Creek. All right, we're back on the hill. Game is over, 49-7, to your final score. Garraway over East Knox. This was a second-round playoff game, the last home game of the season for the Garraway Pirates. The next round is at a neutral site. We'll try to find out who the Pirates will play next. Get some final scores from across the area. Seniors are on the field here for Garraway. Last home game of the season for their careers, but they will play on. Week three of the OHSAA high school playoffs are next week on Friday. Don't know exactly who the Pirates are going to play. Don't know where they will play. But all that matters right now is that they will play after a 49-7 win over East Knox. Only four possessions there in the second half of that game as it was a running clock throughout. Luis Wall with the second half touchdown for the Garraway Pirates. Scored halftime was 42 to nothing. East Knox got on the board. In the second half with Blake Elliott scoring the touchdown for the Bulldogs. But with that running clock, there's not nearly enough time for them to put anything else together. Again, the final score here, 49-7. It's Garraway over East Knox. Try to get some scores from across the area. But one other IBC team, Indian Valley, up 28-10 over Bishop Reddy in their playoff game in Division Four. That was a third quarter score. We'll try to get you updated on some other IBC schools. Ridgewood's out there playing. Sandy Valley has a game. Newcomerstown is in action. And Malvern is playing in the IBC. So we'll try to find some scores on those games for you. We're also putting together these statistics. Most of our statistics were finished by halftime as Garraway, throughout the second half, had their second and third string in the game. Again, Luis Wall scored that second-half touchdown, but Dylan Sunlin had three first-half touchdowns for the Garraway Pirates. Brady Geibel threw touchdown passes to Jensen Garber and Wyatt Wallach. And again, the final score here from the Hill in Sugar Creek, 49-7. Garraway over East Knox, a one seed beating a nine seed. Garraway advances to the next round of the Division Six playoffs.
We're going to take a break here. We'll be back with your statistics and some final scores. 49 to 7 the score here on your sports voice of the valley. The Eat Fresh Refresh just won't stop. Now Subway is refreshing their catering with easy order platters and box meals perfect for any occasion. Start with sandwich or wrap platters. They're loaded with craveable crowd pleasers to feed your crew without all the work. Or try individually packaged box meals featuring a tasty six inch sub, foot long or wrap, plus chips and a freshly baked cookie. When you have a group to feed, make it fun, delicious and easy with catering from Subway. Visit Subway.com to place your catering order. Advance notice may be required. Anyone can improve their balance, hand-eye coordination, discipline, footwork, endurance, and cardio with boxing classes at the T County Boxing Academy on East High Avenue in New Philadelphia. Stop in, call, or text to get the same animal and 5% nutrition sports supplements used by pro boxer Sugar Dre Donovan, featuring the all-new 5% pre-workout RTD known as Kill It. Follow the T County Boxing Academy on Facebook for training videos and product reviews. The T County Boxing Academy, where serious athletes train. Let Sugar Valley Meats help you get ready for the game with all your tailgate favorites. Their retail store features the freshest locally raised beef, pork, and chicken. Enjoy freshly cured and smoked meats from the Sugar Valley Smokehouse, along with bologna, hot dogs, jerkies, and more. They can custom cut your order, and all meats are dressed on site, all with everyday low prices. Sugar Valley Meats, State Route 39 to Dutch Valley Drive, turn right and go a quarter of a mile, celebrating over 30 years of fresh, farm-raised local meats. The First National Bank of Denison is proud to be your locally owned community bank. As a community bank, they're also proud to be a sponsor of today's game. Supporting local high school athletics is just one way the First National Bank gives back to the schools and communities that have helped make them successful. The First National Bank of Denison, proud to be your locally owned community bank. Visit them online at fnbdenison.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Wendy's new breakfast two for three dollar biggie bundles let you create your own delicious combo. Choose from a sausage biscuit, egg and cheese biscuit, small seasoned potatoes, and a medium hot coffee. But it's obvious which combo's the best. Sausage biscuit and small seasoned potatoes. Well, maybe it's the fresh cracked egg and cheese biscuit with a medium hot coffee. Or two savory sausage biscuits. Yeah, uh, whichever you pick, you can't go wrong. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's new two for three dollar biggie bundles. Limited time only. U.S. price of participation may vary. Not valid in a combo. Single item at regular price. All right, it is 49 to 7, the final score here. Garraway of Reese Knox, an emotional moment taking place on the field as the seniors for the football team, seniors for the band, seniors for the cheer squad are making their way across the field for the final senior walk of the season. You can see the emotions on the sideline for East Knox, too, as their season comes to an end. 49 to 7, Garraway over the Bulldogs. Let's wrap it up here. We're starting to shiver, getting cold here. <laughs> so let's go through our statistical report, Kyle. Absolutely. So looking at East Knox, uh, passing-wise, Jax Lester ended up 6 of 10 through the air for 97 yards. Catching those passes were Caden Wengert with four catches for 63 yards. Brayson Davis, two catches for 27 on the ground. Jax Lester, six carries for negative 26 yards. Blake Elliott, 15 carries for 63 yards. Aaron White, two carries for 20 yards. And Luke Holtzinger, two carries for nine yards. That adds up to 163 total yards of offense for the Bulldogs. For the victorious Pirates, Brady Geibel, 7-7, perfect through the air for 156 yards and three touchdowns. Catching those passes were Jensen Garber, four catches for 75 yards and two touchdowns. Wyatt Wallach, one catch for 24 yards and a touchdown. Dylan Sumlin, a catch for 51 yards. And Braden Raber, one catch for six yards. On the ground, Geibel finished with eight carries for 26 yards. Dylan Sundland, 12 carries, 97 yards, and three touchdowns. In uh, in.
backup duty, Jalen Jimenez, seven carries for 20 yards. And Luis Wall, nine carries for 58 yards and a touchdown, adding up to 357 yards of total offense for the victorious Pirates. All right, Kyle, it's time to pick the Subway player of the game. A lot of choices out there. Looking at uh, Brady Geibel with seven of seven. Almost half of those were touchdown passes. You talk about the defensive effort of Jace Wallach today on the field. But uh, we're going to go with the running back, Kyle. Absolutely. Dylan Sundlin ended up with uh, 148 all-purpose yards, three touchdowns um, in really only the, the first half. Didn't see the field on the second half, so congratulations to Dylan Sundlin, our Subway player of the game. All right, again, congratulations to Dylan Sumlin and all the Garraway Pirates on their 49-7 victory over East Knox. They advance in the postseason tournament. Next week, it looks like it's going to be Northbourne. It looks like they were up 31-6 over Trimble in the fourth quarter of that game. That will be on a neutral site. Stay tuned to WJER online at WJER.com. We are also on the radio, 100.9 FM. 14.50 a.m. Keep you updated on our high school sports coverage. Thanks to Claxton Communications for helping us put this show on our live stream at WJER.com and on our YouTube channel. Kyle Minnis, it's been great calling the game with you. Absolutely. Thanks, Bill. Enjoyed it. All right. 49-7, your final score. Garraway advances over East Knox. For the WJER sports team, I'm Bill Hammerstrom on your sports voice of the Valley. You've been watching high school football playoff action with your Garraway Pirates. WJER Sports and Claxon Communications presented this live video stream on the WJER Radio YouTube channel. And replays can be found on demand at WJER.com slash videos. Thanks to our scoreboard sponsors, Kime and Charm, Cleveland Clinic Union Hospital, First National Bank of Denison, Hampshire Insurance, Wendy's, T County Boxing Academy, Commercial and Savings Bank, and Sugar Valley Meats. At the conclusion of the game, we selected the player of the game courtesy of your local Subway restaurants. For the best in high school sports, stay tuned to WJER through all of the seasons. WJER is your sports voice of the valley.